Hi, church. Pastor Jake, just wanted to uh, connect with you here midweek. It's a big week for us as a church and wanted to celebrate uh, last Sunday. Our Palm Sunday celebration was really great and wanted to especially say thanks to our youth uh, leaders and our children's leaders who served kids in various ways last Sunday and uh, facilitated the kids being involved in Palm Sunday, remembering Jesus entering Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, palm branches being waved. It was a sweet time. And so thank you for those who were involved. And it's a big week for us as a church. Uh, We have several things going on this week that I want to really make you aware of. One, the first is our Good Friday service on Friday, the 15th of April, 7 p.m. here at FBC. And I want to just encourage you to come bring a friend Uh, It's going to be a good time of worship, of scripture, of reflection on what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. And then Saturday morning, 930, we'll have an Easter egg hunt uh, that uh, will be a little bit different than originally planned uh, because of the weather. Um, But uh, stay posted here uh, on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, and uh, in our app for more information on that. We'll be sharing that with you. A 9.30 Saturday morning Easter egg hunt. And uh, in Easter Sunday, we'll celebrate together at uh, 9.30 a.m. And uh, we're going to have several things going on. Just really looking forward to that uh, service time together. Uh, at 9 o'clock, we'll, we'll have a photo booth in the Welcome Center. I want to just encourage people to take advantage of that. Family, friends, take photos together and uh, we'll get those to you. Um, awesome to be able to have uh, a good quality photo with a nice backdrop for Easter. And so I want to encourage you to, to make use of that both before and uh, during and then after the, the worship gathering on Sunday. Uh, we're going to have uh, baptisms on Easter Sunday too, which we're very much looking forward to. Uh, just awesome to be able to celebrate and not only the death of Jesus for us, but the resurrection of Jesus and new life being celebrated by people as they profess their faith in Jesus through baptism and what Jesus has done in their lives. And so it's going to be a great Sunday to celebrate. Lots of good music, brass, all kinds of good celebrating together this Sunday, celebrating Jesus in his resurrection for us and all that that means for us. And last uh, last week we were in Hebrews 10 uh, in this video, and so I promised that we'd come back to it. And I just want to uh, read this passage again for us. Uh, this week, and then just make a couple of observations here. So, uh, for this is Hebrews 10. For since the law has but a shadow, and I think I had you circle that word, of uh, the good things to come, instead of the true form of these realities, it can never, which is a strong word, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, they would they not have ceased to be offered since the worshipers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sins. But in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. Every year as these sacrifices are being offered, there is a reminder of sins. And this is a very strong statement, for it is impossible, impossible, for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. It is impossible. And so you're left wondering, so so what then? And in verse 5 through 7, consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come to do your will Oh God. Verse 8, when he said above, and he, he recounts this, actually uh, 5, 6, and 7 come from the Psalms, come from Isaiah. You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law we see here. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. Whose will? <laughs> the will of God. Right. In, he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. He does away with the first in order to establish the second. And by that will, whose will? God's will. We have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus 
This is beautiful. This is this body that was prophesied about, talked about here. Jesus Christ once for all. Remember last week I said, be thinking about this reality of a once for all sacrifice. Once for all. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Alluding to the specialness of this once for all sacrifice, right? This is a unique kind of sacrifice. Verse 12, but when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins. So no more every year, no more bulls and goats, a single sacrifice for sins. That's how special this was. When he had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, look at this, he sat down at the right hand of God. Uh, this, is a, this is a sign of uh, what he called out from the cross, it is finished, to tell us die of the finished work of Jesus for us. And look at what 13 says, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. That's those who are in Christ, united with him through faith. That's you and me. If you are in Christ, you are being sanctified. Verse 15 says, The Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their hearts. And I will write them on their minds. And then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Um, in these there is forgiveness of sins. There is no longer any offering for sin. So there is forgiveness of there is forgiveness of these, their sins and their lawless deeds. God is saying, uh, there is no longer any offering. If there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. This is a really special sacrifice. That's what we're going to celebrate at Good Friday. It's what the Passover was pointing to and the type of lamb that needed to be selected. It's the big deal with all of the sacrifices throughout history pointing to this special sacrifice that was to be accomplished for us on Good Friday. This is good news. This is really good news for you and for me. And I want to encourage us to be reflecting on this as we come to Good Friday service together. God bless you.